Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this silhouette of a stag deer. Um, we're going to be doing it step by step from start to finish. And I think this one's going to be fairly easy. Got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in chat tonight for our live show. So if you have questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm using a 9 by 12 inch Belgian linen canvas board from Frederick's. It's just a, any size really will do for this one. You could even do it in a long um, way if you wanted him taking up more of the vertical. But uh, it's going to be easy uh, painting to adapt, I think. I've got a number 12 bright and number 2 or two inch Aspen for the background. These are Princeton brushes. They're our brush sponsor. Fredericks is our canvas sponsor. So thank you to both of them before I forget. Um, so 2 inch Aspen just for some of the large areas in the background. And then the number 12 bright in case we want some of the more um, large detailed areas back there. And then I've got a couple of the same size there. <laughs> Don't need that. Um, three eighths inch and five eighths inch deer foot stippler. That'll be for most of the background um, kind of foggy trees and things in the background. And then I've got a, um, a few brushes for the foreground bushes. I've got a three eighths inch quarter inch blender and then a uh, 10 aught fan. The red handles are their velvet touch and then the blue are their select brushes. The large um, long one here is the 6100 series. So if you're looking on um, the brush guys are looking to buy them those brushes. These are the, the ones I'm using. If you're looking for the exact ones, you don't have to use the exact brushes, just whatever you've got that's similar will work. Um, got a quarter inch, three eighths inch angle and a number two round for the actual deer itself. I'm not sure I'm going to need all these brushes, but I've got them out just in case. And then I'm also going to mix some of my colors with a, with a palette knife. And, um, I like using the flexible ones so that they, um, it's a little bit easier to mix the paints with. All right, let's go over colors. I've just got a very limited palette tonight. Ca uh, carbon black, burnt umber. This is quinacridone burnt orange. If you don't have that, you could substitute like a burnt sienna. Um, yellow oxide, ultramarine blue, and uh, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and zinc white. That's a transparent white. And then this is our glazing medium here. So um, first thing I want to do is just kind of get some color on the background, and then we'll mix up some of our... Um, area uh, colors for the uh, details. So just going to wet down this large brush, grab some of the yellow oxide, just a little bit of it, and actually I'm just going to go ahead and put out some titanium white where I want it over here because this is such a large brush. It's going to take up a lot of paint here. So really like one part paint to ten parts white, <laughs> you know, one part yellow. That there's not a whole lot of yellow in here, just a little bit. And I could have used, I thought about maybe using um, even just a little bit brighter yellow. You could use a cadmium yellow maybe. Um, for just at the very top, there's just like one little area that's kind of a really brighter yellow. But that's going to, I think, work pretty well for us. So I'm going to grab a little bit of glazy medium, a little bit of water just to kind of thin out my paint a little bit. And if you want to, you can spray your canvas. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, just spray a little bit with water, and it'll make it easier for this paint to go on. So I just mainly want this upper area covered. And the large brush just makes it real easy to get that on there and get it kind of smooth all the way across. You can see how it's a little bit darker down here. That's fine. I'm going to go grab just a touch and I mean just a teeny tiny little bit of the burnt orange here and blend that in just to one corner. And I'm going to go across here and bring that up maybe a little bit more so I can see it. I'm going to be careful though because you can see how much that <laughs> quinacridones are really a really beautiful um, kind of high tinting strength. So they will, quinacridone magenta and quinacridone burnt orange here, they'll really kind of take over if you let them. So just have to manage that. So the, there's just a slight little bit of that orangish glow right there. 
right kind of where those trees are going to go. And our horizon line is going to be just above the halfway mark. So I'm kind of stopping right about where I think that that um, horizon line in the distance is going to be. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint that all the way in and try to blend that up. Get some of that dark. Now I've got it all the way through my brush because I'm not worried about it. And I'm just making sure that I've got that orangish color all the way across. And then I'm kind of curving it a little bit at the top here. It's very subtle. Very subtle. And I want to keep it very light. All right. And then uh, down here, let's go ahead and I'm going to get a little bit more water. And pick up some more of this yellow here. And just a teeny, 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 tiny bit of the blue ultramarine blue like about that much like literally just a tiny little corner of it very good there we go I'm going to use that down here and then most of the rest of this down here is going to be very dark but there is just a, like a little area right in here that's got that kind of a, like a light green, almost taupey brown color. It's really pretty. So we'll just give this whole canvas a little color. I'm not worried about the value in this up foreground right now. I'm just kind of trying to get the basic colors in there. That looks pretty good. All right. So that's it for this brush. I'm just going to kind of wet it down really good and set it up to the side until I can clean it. So while this is drying, let's go ahead and mix up some of our colors that we're going to be using for our trees and things. So I'm going to, ooh, this thing always makes such lovely noises on the... Here, let me turn up the mic over there real quick. Turn, turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> Nails on chalkboard. Oh, yeah, so bad. So somebody asked, uh, how much water is too much water that they're, they're always scared that they'll, that their paint will lift. Um, you, you don't want to use, I think the, it's like 30 or 40%. I'm not really exactly sure, but something in there. So, um, you're probably going to be fine unless you're watering it down so much that you're seeing through it on your palette you're you're probably fine it does need a little bit of water though uh, heavy body acrylics need a little bit for um, them to flow well so oh my gosh that's so bad it's the worst sound okay I'm using the unbleached titanium here it's already it's got kind of a, it's a yellowy white yellowish white. I really didn't need that much of the burnt orange. I grabbed way too much there. So Can you put it back? Pretty good. <laughs> no? Okay. No. I think if I go slow, it doesn't scrape as much. Yeah, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> it's just like not saying, hey Siri. <laughs> Stop it. You're messing with people. I again. am, but I... Forgot that I have a You iPad, have an iPad, so, so now it just to, turned it on yourself. I did it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> All right, so served you right. Yep. Mm. <laughs> All right, so adding a little bit of blue to this one over here. And it'll make kind of a really pretty lavender kind of color. It's a It's a dark color. Um, well, not dark. It's a kind of a dull, muted lavender. Mix in the quinacridone burnt orange with the ultramarine blue. Now, you're not going to get this color with um, burnt sienna. So I said you could substitute the quinacridone burnt orange but if you do, or with um, burnt sienna. But if you do that, then you'll want to add a, like, a little bit of... Uh, magenta or something like that in there so that's pretty good that's going to be way too dark though you can see kind of against that light color so what we're going to do is add white to that so I'm going to grab a bunch of white and just pull it over here mix that together 
I'm just giving this lots of time to dry, so I'm kind of taking my time with the mixing these colors. Um, and really, not going to need a whole lot of this color. This purpley blue color is really more of the this background, and it's still going to be way too way too dark right here. But what I'll do is when I put it on, I'll add even more white to it. We'll go ahead and add just a little bit right now, but it's not going to take a whole lot of a whole lot of paint to get it to cover. So real quick, somebody mm -hmm. had a follow-up question to the water. Yes. They want to know, with the uh, softer body acrylics, do you mm -hmm. use as much water, or is there a rule of thumb? Or? Um, I'd, it depends on the kind. Uh, if you're using, like, a craft acrylic, craft acrylics are very, um, like, low pigment, so you're, m the majority of the of the paint is actually um, filler, is the actual acrylic medium that you would be adding, like this stuff here. Um, so you don't need to worry about the water, you know, thinning it out because it's it's not as pigmented. So if you're using a soft body paint that's a, like a student quality, then it'll be somewhere in between. You still won't want to add too much water to it, but it, you can add a little bit more maybe than you would with the heavy body acrylics. Because the student student quality will have less pigment, you know, in them. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and we'll use uh, we'll use the well. I want to leave that. I'm going to grab some of the ultramarine blue and some of my yellow. And let's mix our green that's going to be our foreground green color. This, this ultramarine blue has a lot of purple in it. And of course purple and yellow are opposite on the color wheel. So they're going to neutralize each other. So having this mixing uh, ultramarine blue with any kind of yellow is going to give you more of a khaki um, army green color. Olive toned neutral green look how pretty that is so i think that's going to be pretty close to what we want in our foreground and then we might add just a little bit of this color in it as well um let me grab just a little bit of that burnt orange and mix that in yeah because this orange is kind of our base color for the entire thing so we kind of want it in, in all of what we're doing base color really that yellow and orange together are kind of our two main colors so okay that looks good so I want it fairly dark and then what I'll do is I'll add my black and my brown to that color and I'm just scraping it once I get it mixed I'm scraping it up into a smaller area so that I can work it and it won't um, dry out as quickly on me so all right, so I've got three pretty good colors there, I think, to work with. And let me see, this is still, I should have had you drawing this while I was doing that, hon. I was wondering that, but yeah, I didn't me, want to break Let me you go out. ahead and have you do that now. Talk about your birds. What? Talk about your birds. Oh, yeah, let me show you what we painted on Sunday. We um, had our bonus video weekend, so that's just a video that I do. Um, the I, I can't really do the five-plus hour videos on YouTube. It just doesn't, um, it financially it doesn't make sense because I don't make enough on YouTube videos to, um, unless they get like a million views or something. <laughs> So I save the, the like really detailed paintings for Patreon. Um, it's $5 to watch me paint. And um, I do the same exact kind of lessons, only they're, they're um, longer versions. So this one took about five hours, I think maybe a little bit more than that. On Sunday, we spent um, most of the day painting it. And uh, it was a lot of fun. So, and uh, you can see he looks pretty fierce. Um but we go into a lot of detail. We, um, I take my time and kind of, um, well, it, since it's like a little bit more low key, I can go a little slower uh, and um, show you 
a few more techniques than I would normally be able to do on our shorter videos on YouTube. So um, those are at patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. There's links down in the description to all of that, um, all of my social media, Facebook and Instagram and um, um, the Patreon if you're interested in that. If you, you know, we've got like over 300 videos on YouTube though. So, and some of them are quite long. Some of them are three plus hours. I think I have a couple of them that are over four hours. So, um, you know, there's several that are kind of detailed paintings. So this is only for those who really, really want um, like extra special, you know, detailed paintings. But we really appreciate our patrons that support us there. That makes it really fun for me because I get to paint these kind of paintings that I wouldn't normally do on YouTube. Because um, they just take too long. All right. I'm gonna put out some you more. said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor Mark. <laughs> He's a good sport. He spends his weekends on the bonus video weekend. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'll just let it say that. That's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> so to clarify for everybody, yes, uh, Patreon members are able to watch replays of all the videos. Yes. It's not just a one shot. You can go back and you have access to all the past bonus videos. Yeah, too. all the past bonus videos. We've got tons of them. Um, well, not tons, but there's probably mm, maybe 20 now. Maybe six. I don't know. Something around tw close to 20. Last time I checked. So um, we've been doing it for two years now. Well, three years now, but two years of not having the, bo the mm -hmm. bonus videos go public. So. All right, oops, I'm going to take my brace off my arm. Left it on. All right, so I've grabbed a little bit of white. I'm going to um, go ahead and just go in with this. I don't think I'm going to need the large um, flat after all. And I'm going to get this purpley, a little bit of the orange. There's a little bit more like of an orange, almost a, almost an outline of the orange right along that edge there. And so I want to get a little bit of both of those colors. And, okay, so that's just about right. Um, maybe a little bit darker, but what uh, what's going to happen with this is it will dry darker. So if I can barely see it when I first put it on, then, that, then I know it's just about the right tone because um, then it will dry a little bit darker and uh, we want it to be very subtle. So we want this background area to just be barely tinted. Um, and I'm just going to tap in. You can already see how it's it's darker back in here. Maybe, maybe you can. I don't know. I can see. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but. So bringing out just a few limbs there. And then the rest of this is pretty solid all the way to the edge. So I'm just kind of pulling down. All the way down and then up in this middle part I might even grab just a little bit more of that blue I feel like just kind of behind his head is just a little bit more of a smoky blue color I'm just gonna add a little bit of that and that's too that's too dark because I can see it really dark there so I'm gonna grab more white and just blend it over so it's not quite so noticeable. Blend it in. And I can grab that while it's wet and do that. You don't want to try to do it once it's dry. Well, I mean, you can cover over it, but um, that's a little bit too obvious, I think. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of the white and blend that pink pur purpley color in with that blue that I just mixed. There we go. And just kind of blend those two together. up and down and just tapping to create some foliage this brush makes it really easy because it kind of spreads out if you've got a new one the brush the bristles kind of hold stick together pretty tight so um, you you may need to press down a little harder or like really when you load it like really press down and smush it 
so that those bristles flare out a little bit and that'll give you a little bit better foliage looking stuff when you do use it. Okay. Okay. So I was uh, trying to barter here. Mm -hmm. I was told people I might be willing to trade some of your paintings for some toilet paper or hand sanitizer. <laughs> But apparently, a lot of their stores are out also, so. <laughs> Toilet paper is no laughing matter. It's amazing what uh, will we, become a currency. We used to have to use, well, I'm not going to even say what we used to use. <laughs> but I have used weird things for toilet paper before. It's not a fun proposition. So, as a child, we'd, we'd run out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> she probably didn't want anybody to know that. And I don't think it was that, that he couldn't afford it. I think that she just didn't go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe bidets will become more popular here in the United States. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Getting the zinc white hair. And... over there and you don't want to mess with it too much while it's drying so this especially over here it's probably already starting to dry so I'm just gonna go ahead and let that set and I'm gonna grab a little bit of this green if I can get a little bit of it it's in my white and then I'm gonna mix it with this purple so we're gonna the green's gonna be down here and so where they're meeting there we're gonna kind of merge those two colors here, so I'm gonna, yeah, that's probably about right. And if this should be just above halfway, so here's our halfway mark, so just above that, we're gonna do some distant bushes that are a little bit smaller, they're kind of almost straight across. just slightly darker so as we come forward we're going to get just a little bit darker with each layer um, yeah so I'm noticing that this bush here is overlapping a little bit right here it may not I'll have to let that dry it may not work yet and I'm noticing that there was a bush right here. So this this is a little farther back than this area in front here. And same thing with this. There's kind of another tree right here. So uh, we'll just have to... Get a little bit of that white. Mix that purple and orangey color together. Which was kind of this tree here. And you can see how much it's it's lightened up since we put it on there. So I'm gonna get, add some white here. So this is the tree line that you can kind of see through the fog. Right. Right. So. Since you can't get hand sanitizer and stuff like that, I think dark chocolate helps also keep the virus away. Really? That's the uh, approach I'm taking. <laughs> For definitive measures. It'd be funny. I can see us coming back, you know, 20 years from now to watch these videos okay. while we're at the mm -hmm. retirement like, home. What are they talking about? And like, what were we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> what was happening? A little time capsules. Yeah. All right, going a little bit darker just so I can see. There we go. Just slightly darker right in there. And same thing right here. Okay, so there we go. Now we kind of created our little background background 
area there. So let's keep on going with this green here. Get that purpley pink color. Get some glazy medium, a little bit of white. titanium there and I'm gonna blend up into that darker area there's kind of like these areas where there's a little bit of light like fog lifting off the grasses and then there'll be another little bit darker area so that's what I'm trying to create here and I'm just going to use this brush and kind of rub it side to side and scrub it in some more color down lower. There we go. Super subtle. Now, if you if you can see the color really dark then you know you've gone too too much. So like it's it's uh it's one of those things less is more. Okay, let's get a little bit of this orangey color here. I'm gonna add it to the green. I'm gonna come across here with that. And I'm just gonna go just below and down. And then I'm gonna grab some glazy medium, some of my light color, and then just do a kind of a lighter version below it. this color on this side. Just a little bit of that orangey, a little bit of the green. And bring it up. that my thing is my images on my screen are kind of flipping hmm. a little bit I don't know. okay did you fix your wires no add a little bit of burnt umber here go a little bit darker there we go Ooh, it's that's the a lot virus. that's a lot darker what it's the virus it's <laughs> shush Serious for some people, I shouldn't be joking about it. That is true. We live in an area that's affected, it's no joke. It is so serious <laughs> that instead of trading food recipes in chat, people are trading hand sanitizer recipes in chat. Are you serious? That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Looking out for each other. All right, so I'm going to get some of this zinc white and I'm just going to come up over the top of this green that I just did. I'm going to blend it in there and blend it down. Get some glazy medium. I'm just going to blend it down into my foreground a little bit. Try to get kind of a blend from the dark to light. And you can see right here where that lifted off. That meant that that color was starting to dry. I can try to tap back in some of that color, some of the darker color. But so what happened was I waited too long before I did this uh, blended out. 
and it started to dry. So when I went to blend it, it just lifted the color instead of blended it. I'm doing some white down there. And okay. set this brush aside now. It's starting to get kind of soggy from being wet down. Get a little bit smaller brush here. And try to see which brush I want to use. I think I'll, I'll go ahead and use this one. mixing this green here that we mixed before and if you forgot the colors you can go back and rewind it I think it was the ultramarine blue and yellow maybe a little bit of this orange and this one was the orange and unbleached titanium so mixing both of those together and maybe a little bit more of the unbleached titanium here so I want to look at the color that I was using before which was kind of right in here and just make sure that I'm going just a little bit darker than that, but not too much darker. So and then when I go over the top, yep, that'll be good. You can see it, but it's not super dark. I'm just going to tap in some Kind of tall grass like stems here. I'm do some darker than the others. Some some of them that are farther away are gonna be a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna grab a little bit more white and do some back here that are a little bit lighter. I'm going right up and over that area that I did the, the kind of orangey color. whole middle ground with this color. I might switch to a little bit bigger brush so I can get a little bit more area covered. more of the darker green here. And there's a bush right here. So this is where our stag's going to come. So we're going to come right down to his feet here. Right to right about here. This is where he's going to be standing in this area. And then brush this all out. The 
bottom edge there so it's all both kind of blended out each time we do a new color kind of blending out that bottom edge so that we don't have to worry about like covering over any hard edge it'll all kind of be fuzzy coming up to it and this will be real dark down here okay so I'm pretty good with that I think so there's a few little leaves 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 <laughs> that are in this area here. So I'm gonna grab the quarter inch angle brush and get this color that we were using in here and just do some kind of stem. So do some lines coming out. Just using that, just pressing the brush flat and using that flat edge of the brush. And then I'm going to come on the end of these and do just setting the brush down and letting the tip kind of create these little leaf shapes. Crisscross them so they're not all going in the same direction. So this will be where our stag is standing. So I really don't have to do a whole lot there. I'm gonna kind of lighten up that one right there. some leaves over here this way just in case the stag is not covering this area. I think he's going to be filled in right here so just make sure we're doing something kind of behind this whole area here. Just so we don't have to worry about where you know where he's standing being covered with stuff. see right there where it's starting to lift again it was not quite dry so just to cover it I can tap in just a little bit of the more solid color It'll cover okay and then let's um, this is dry enough I think We'll go ahead and put in some of our, let's let this dry really good right in here because this is where we've got to put our deer. So. Get some of that green and some of the unbleached titanium here. And I'm going to do some of these leaf, leafy things right in here, kind of in this middle ground here because I am seeing that there are some kind of showing a lot of this is covered, but. You okay? Yep. <laughs> What'd you do? Ran in the door? I stepped too close to the door. Oh. I so, decided. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm going to have you dry this here. Again? Yeah. Okay. I'll show how to draw the deer. Okay, so his feet are covered. Um, so we're not seeing that part of him. The main area of him kind of goes from about there to there, and then about 
halfway we're seeing the leg and then the neck so kind of like that sort of where I'd start and then the ear is going to be off the side here antler coming up out towards the ear and up and curve back and then the top of the head is sort of flat the other ear is coming out at an angle like that and then we're seeing that there's an angle down this way and for the eye socket maybe not that far down but somewhere in there and then um, And then a straight line for the, kind of follows this curve, this line here. So whatever line this is, then we'll follow, follow it down here. It's a little bit of a dip. And then the nose is kind of squared off. It's got, got a little bit of a nostril that sticks out right there. I don't know how detailed you want to get with yours. Uh, angles back this way. So kind of squares off right here. And then angles back in this direction and then up here and that's probably a little bit long I think I made it a little bit long this this distance here between the ears is about the same distance as we're seeing from this ear to wherever the nose kind of is so right in here somewhere it's just a little bit off there we go yeah and they've got a nice thick neck and there's a little fuzz coming off the neck and then the rump is about uh, maybe just a little bit before where this curve is coming in on the neck here and it angles out basically kind of following that same angle there curves around a little bit not as not far not in, any farther out than the mouth so kind of come down from the mouth there that's where that is and then rounded it out here for that body and then there's a middle of the legs there where they're kind of touching and there's two of his legs kind of side by sides here so this leg looks particularly large but I think there's another you're just seeing the kind of two the silhouette of both legs together there that's why they look a little bit abnormal uh, so go right here the knee joint comes out and then this bottom one curves in real close here and it's up a little bit higher the the knuckle or the knee joint it's a little higher so that's your basic silhouette and um, if you don't want to draw this I will have the traceable available on patreon uh, for it's two dollars for the one the uh, traceables it for all of the traceables that you want so it's just dollar a month two dollars a month and then you can cancel anytime so if you just want the one month worth you can sign up and then go back in and immediately cancel and it'll still give you the whole month of this month you know the rest of this month until april 1st so it it does it by date of of when you sign up and every month it renews on the first of the month so if you ever wanted to cancel you just have to cancel before that first of the month and then you won't get charged for that next month so and this one goes up a little higher than this one so bring this up a little higher this a little too high I, did, I know I did but you get the idea yeah this one's way too long <laughs> but that's all right <laughs> you can 
take your time with it. I'm just trying to show you kind of the basics there. All right, so I've got mine already drawn out on tracing paper and I am going to trace it on here. So he's got creepy eye, which I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna put the eye, I'm not sure. You can barely see it on the, on the uh, I'd say no thing. No eye, okay. in there. I'm going to go ahead and use the yellow. I don't know if it'll show up. We'll see. We'll, we'll find out together. I may have to need, use the white. But I want to get a color that's light um, or the um, closest to kind of our main color. I don't want uh, it too dark. Let's see. You can see it. Oh yeah, I can see it just fine. Okay. And I'm going to trace on the inside of my lines. That way I can cover up these traced lines and I don't, I'm not going to make my drawing larger. If you trace right onto the line, you're going to make your drawing out here. It'll widen it out trying to cover up the line your paint so so just trace just inside your trace your drawn lines there Tracing got a question. Okay. Somebody would like to know that okay. this, when progressing, what? When progressing between different skill levels, mm -hmm. um, do you kind of know when to move on, or do you just kind of like push and stretch yourself to the next level? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that once you get comfortable with whatever it is you're doing and you don't feel like it... Well, I'm sorry, I'm trying to put it away. I was going to show what kind I was using there. It's a wax-free, so it's, it's actually water-soluble. You can erase it. It's in the Amazon, it's in the Amazon store. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see here. I need to use the wet paper towel. Just, I can see little areas where that yellow came off on the canvas here. So I'm just going to wipe those off very lightly. Don't roll it too hard because that paint's not cured yet. It'll, it'll take a, about 24 hours for your paint to cure. So even this paint that's dried, if you rubbed on it or scratched it, it would come off your canvas and that's pretty normal. Um, what was the question? Um, do you know when to move to the next level? Oh, yeah, I would say once you're kind of comfortable with whatever it is you're painting and you don't feel like it's um, all that difficult yet, you know, like I, I would say then, um, you know, you can challenge yourself with trying something new. Um, so it doesn't depend on how many points you've collected? <laughs> no. Okay. Because the art police can take away points like that. That's true. I I can attest to that. And sometimes I take away points for being late to the show. <laughs> so for audience members. Yep. Yeah, so uh -huh. keep a keep an eye on your scorecard. Don't be tardy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm scraping myself off a clean spot to work with here, and our. Deer, it's kind of a brownish color. So I'm going to use the uh, burnt umber. Pretty good amount of it. And some of the ultramarine blue here. Make a brown black color. There we go. 
little bit more brown than blue so it stays on the brown side. And then I might even add just a little bit of this green. Let's see what he looks like. That looks pretty good. Now if I go right onto the line here. So you weren't using a pencil just now, right? You were using like a stylus or something like that? Yes, I was using a stylus. Um, yeah, and all of that stuff that I was using there is in the Amazon store. So it's in my acrylic painting supplies list. Click and show more below the video. Yeah. And then you'll see the end link to Amazon. It's amazon.com slash shop slash Angela Fine Art. So it's not, it's... You can't search for me on there. It won't it won't show up. You have to know the direct link. Okay. Add some water to that because that is drying out really fast. I want it a little bit lighter. Mix a little bit of the unbleached titanium there. Just to make it a little bit more of a smoky gray brown color. And now it's just kind of a matter of filling in these trace lines. These kind of silhouette paintings are really fun. To do and they're great for beginners because they're you don't have to worry about the fur you don't have to worry about any of that there's no uh, none of that all you have to do is fill it in and just use whatever brush is the I, I like to use the largest brush that will easily fit into an area when I'm doing it so um, that's why I'm doing it with a 3 8 inch angle brush here and then I'll switch to a um, the smaller brushes, the smaller round for the antlers. And you can see how it's not really covering in one coat, so we're going to need two coats to cover him. Yeah, that's fine, that's normal. So just try to smooth out your edges so when you do go to. Um, Put your second coat on there it'll be smooth underneath so if there's what i'm saying is like if you're doing it and you get a little like a big line there just go back over and lightly smooth it out so that uh, you don't have any big goobers to cover <clears throat> I think they're doing all right. Good. Yeah, we've got a lot of the unusual suspects here. Nice. Hanging out with us, chatting. Like it. It's the safest thing to do right now in the world. <laughs> Be by yourself. <laughs> Talking to people online. Online. I like it. Somebody asked, have you tried the Princeton Catalyst brushes yet? Uh, I have. They are a little bit firmer than I like. So they're a little bit, um, like I like to be able to, I like a little bit more flexibility. Like these ones are a little bit softer. They're a little bit more flexible. Um, so that's what I look for in a brush because I, I tend towards more um, realistic type painting. And so to get the realism, you need to be able to kind of blend and to blend, you need, you need a flexible, softer, softer brush. Um, if you're going for kind of more of a painterly look where you want the brush strokes to show and um, that kind of thing, then something like the Catalyst is a great choice because they're, um, they're going to be much firmer. The, um, the Aspen brushes that I've been using in some of my videos, like the, um, all of the Impressionist Girl videos, I'm lightening up the feet there a little bit with just adding the unbleached titanium there at the bottom um, to the feet area. Um, to kind of disappear them into the grass there. Um, 
I'll show you those here in a second. The Aspen brushes. Those are kind of a happy medium, I feel like, between the Catalyst. The Catalyst almost felt like plastic to me. Like they were so, you know, they were so um, stiff that they just didn't have any flexibility for the kind of painting that I like to do. But again, it depends on the kind of painting you do, you know. These um, Aspen are kind of a happy medium because they're still flexible, but they're much firmer than the um, than the 6100 series. That's much a softer filament. Um, and they these ones will make a super fine point when you get them wet. So that's the main difference is like these brushes will make, um, you know, just a razor sharp fine edge. And then the thicker brushes, the ones that are stiffer, you can get a good edge on them, but once you load them up with paint, they tend to um, just be just a little bit wider, a little bit, you know, thicker. So that's all. It's not, you know, it's just kind of a personal preference. But I do like their Catalyst blades. I've, I have those and I've used those um, for paintings before. We've used those in palette knife paintings. All these little mini blades and then they have larger ones with with all kinds of different tips and things on them i've used them in a few brush, a few videos i just don't do a whole lot of textured painting so okay well, looks like you took some of those things out of the drawer in the kitchen i know they do look like spatulas don't they all right i'm going to use the number two round here For the rest of this and we'll need to give him a second coat too but we'll just let him set for now and get his antlers in and you also want to use a little bit more water with the round brushes so I'm just adding a little bit of the glazing medium with my water just to make sure that it sticks well I don't want to thin it out so much that it's see-through because I don't want to have to do these twice. So I want to keep them fairly thick with paint. So once I load my brush up, I'm going to really kind of scoop it in there and then load and just twirl the tip so that I get a good fine point on it but I'm not really pressing down. So I'm kind of scooping the paint up into it and then I'm just pressing the tip down just a little bit to twirl it. But you can kind of see how thick that paint is on there and that'll help me be able to uh, get more paint down on the canvas when I paint these in. I won't have to come back and do it again because the more times you mess with an area, especially with these little round brushes the wider and wider your painting your painting's gonna get it's just kind of the way it works so if you don't want to have to oh i don't know what i did there this goes right here so if somebody has some uh paint markers mm -hmm. uh, they were wanting to know would you suggest to use them yeah, this that would work great for paint markers. This would be a great use for those because they'll fit nicely for something like this. And if I was doing this in black, I might be tempted to grab my marker to do it for sure. I've used the markers before in some of these tutorials. Um, we used them when we did that gate um, way back. We did that ocean gate with uh, Bo uh, Bogen Bougainvillea on the top mm -hmm. and um, used a pen for the gate, the wrought iron gate, because it was just so tedious with the brush. Okay, I need to tilt this because I can't see my light. There we go. There. 
If you pull it this way, you're going to get an even smaller line if you kind of just gradually lift the pressure on your brush. And get a really fine line. We did one, it was kind of a fantasy deer where we did like birds and leaves and things and the antlers made them real big, like tree branches. That would be kind of cool here too. You could get real creative, put a bird setting up on here, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. whatever you wanted to do. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, this background is perfect for doing, you know, any kind of wildlife for That's sure. That's true, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a deer, it could be any kind of thing. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. sure. And when I say wildlife, I mean tanks. Tanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> how, how, how did you know? Somebody. I can't remember. Uh, what was, I can't remember the comment. It was really funny, though. One of the my recent comments on there was about how she was going to... She thought you could paint a tank in them. But I can't remember if it was the... I want to say it was the gondolas at night or something. She was like, said something about tanks. I was like, yep, yeah, don't encourage him. I need all the encouragement I can get. <laughs> oh, this is so pretty. I love this color. Really nice. And then, you know, if you get the, if it, if it's too dark, you can always go back in and we can glaze back over it with our um, zinc white. I may do anyways because it is a little bit lighter than the photograph I was in all seriousness I was thinking that you could probably do like a silhouette of a horse or somebody on a horse or um, something like that you know because you did this horse I did silhouette. a horse in the yeah the horse the this, this would be a good companion for that painting actually it's sitting right over there if you want to grab it so I can show it um, but yeah, they mm -hmm, it's sitting right on top. <laughs> Could it cost you? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they but definitely they have a good, you know, good combo. The horse is a little bit smaller, but so similar think, colors. So you think the deer's checking out the horse? <laughs> <laughs> coat on some of these bigger areas where I'm seeing but I did run um, when I'm doing this I'm pulling in the direction that you might see um, you know how the antlers have those kind of striations in them somewhat um, so when I pulled my lines um, I was pulling in the direction that I would see that so that just in case if any of those showed, if any of the lines show through, it could, it could be kind of an enhanced, kind of look like it's sort of the lines in the antlers. I'm pretty, pretty good with that, I think. So, so there's a little bit of one right here. You have some pretty good fans out there. Oh, yeah. 
you got somebody who underwent double bypass surgery on Saturday. Whoa. And they're watching you from their recovery room right now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, we'll be praying for you. Wow. But I think your soft voice has put the doctors to sleep, so that might d- be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> We don't want that. <laughs> I'm just trying to... I noticed that one looked a little thick right there. Let me see if I can get any of that off without taking off the background color. Okay. This is dangerous. Don't do this. Without supervision. No, I'm joking. <laughs> just be careful. You can pull up. You can pull off more than you intend to pull off. Okay. Make this one a little bit smaller here. There we go. So basically... Somebody should use the brush they're most comfortable with when they're doing detail work like this. Yes, yes. And and like I said, the largest one that you feel comfortable with because the bigger it is, the easier it will be to manipulate and and cover, you know, your paint areas that you're working on. I'm getting some of this color here and I'm gonna give it a second coat. We added a little bit more of the unbleached titanium and did dry a little bit darker than I want it to be. may end up having to do a second coat on those antlers after all. Or I could do the ears and the body a little bit different from it, let them be a little bit darker. We'll see. So you just did something that you just naturally do that a lot of people don't think of when they're painting, which is, yeah, it's legal to turn the canvas around Mm -hmm. and paint it in a direction that you're more comfortable with. Right. Yes, definitely. And when you're doing stuff like the antlers, especially, you may find that it's easier to do it in, I find it's easier to paint from like in the direction that I would normally write um, lettering, you know, with a pen. Spray this. Lose all of my color. I know it's a new thing that bottle seems to like to do. I think we need to have a timer set up to see how long it goes. See if we can set some records. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just giving it a second coat. It's this little bit lighter version.
area here is just not one to cover. Okay, so let's grab this green now. This is the full full strength green before we were adding color to it. Now it's not colored at all. Yeah, there we go. I'm just gonna tap over feet, create some bushes and things here. Use the edge of it. And you do that, why? What? And you do that, why? Do what, why? Put this? the greenery around the feet, yeah. Because it's in the picture. <laughs> oh, so it's not to like ground it or make it not look like it's floating or anything like that? Well, yeah, but oh. I mean, yeah, it's covering his feet. I was trying to get all artsy on you there. In your the picture. <laughs> you, <laughs> went, you went engineer on me and I went artsy. <laughs> <laughs> do a good job for this. Get some white or water, I mean. Has these kind of specky. You know what? It's not going up that far. doing some kind of straight up and some at an angle to make them look a little bit more natural. Make sure they're not kind of, they're attached to something. So you don't want any kind of just setting out in the middle of not, you know, with nothing attaching it. Somebody asked that when you use a fan brush, do you hear Bob Ross? <laughs> yes. I feel like I'm channeling Bob Ross when I... <laughs> nice. Okay. And then let's use my black. Green is still wet, so I'm just kind of fluffing into that green so it's kind of blending together. And if your green's already dried, just maybe put a little bit of extra green down right where you're going to be blending these in. It'll just help it look a little softer. So you can lay a little bit of green down first and then go back in with the darker. there. 
but you do want this whole area here filled in. So there's really no kind of the lighter colors peeking through here. So. some of this with the lighter green kind of set that in there because this green over here was dry so it's not kind of blending at all so I can do that blend it in a little bit it up if this is dry already I'm gonna take some of the zinc white and some of my glazing medium so it's even more thinned out wipe my brush off really good so I have just very little paint on here and I'm gonna just brush over him just a little bit see how it's softening him up and keep your brush moving. Don't do one area too much because what will happen is it will start to lift that white off. So just want to keep on moving. Do it quickly. Somebody touched it up there. I wonder who did that. Mark Anderson. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Looks like a fingerprint to me. Oh, somebody else has been touching it too, though, I mm, think. That's true. Could have been me. Okay. All right, so yeah, that helped kind of fog it up, and then we can use some of this fog if this is dry enough. I don't know. We'll see. We can tap it a little bit here and there and, and over some of this just a little bit keep it fairly light but it'll help kind of tie everything in together and you can see it's in the photograph too I'm not making this up so <laughs> it's kind of like got some little foggy areas in this foreground as well and anywhere else, like in your background, if you decide some, you know, like maybe this area got too dark or something like that, um, you can go back in and do this um, white, uh, zinc white, uh, foggy effect in that area. So, and I feel like I want to do, even if it's not on the photograph, I feel like I just think it would look nice to have some splattering so I'm gonna do some with the green this color green here almost white you laughing at me Absolutely. even though it's not here I think we're just gonna do it for the heck of it well I think it'll look cool I think it'll not, add to that. I'm not saying it's not. Kind of misty look. And just wiping off. See how that worked? With it, without it. So you decide what you want to do. If you want to do it or not, up to you. You don't have to splatter. I'm going to do it. We will still be your friend. Exactly. No points taken off if you don't splatter. And by blotting it, it just softens the look. And if you don't want them to, because, you know, you blot here and then you might blot again and it might transfer a little bit of that paint so that you don't want that to happen, then just keep turning your paper towel so that it has a clean spot all every time you 
blot, but yeah, I like that. Just kind of musses it up a little bit, makes a little bit more kind of, I don't know, like there's particulates floating around in the air and stuff mm -hmm. happening. Bugs. Bugs, exactly. Uh, let's get some of this color. Maybe a little bit of the darker greenish. And I'm going to use this number two. We'll see if it's small enough to get my signature in here. Oh, yeah. I really should have come up with a shorter version of my name to sign with. <laughs> you know, like, I think Bob did Ross, just mm -hmm. R-O-S-S. Should just do AA or something. Make it easier on myself. Mm -hmm. Too late now. <laughs> Got some super chat. Mark's been waiting all day for that. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, yes. I need more cowbell. <laughs> it's a cure for the... Up here. For the coronavirus. <laughs> I don't think so. No? Okay. Well, it doesn't hurt. So, uh, we had a few super chats tonight. Their first one was from Lady. And she says, thank you for spending your evening with us. Oh. Well, thank you, Lady. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, too, for spending your time with us, too. And then the second one was from Mama. And she says, thank you for bringing happiness and color to us. For, oh. talk, for taking time to teach us and answering all of our questions. You are truly amazing, Angela. I love being part of this group you've created. Oh, thank you. Wow. wow. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> so <Yeah>. sweet. <laughs> it's, I feel the same. You guys are pretty awesome. We, mm -hmm. we feel very blessed to mm. get to know you guys. And I know Mark gets, gets uh, to have more yeah, fun I than could, I do because he gets to chat. I guess I'm not day. here because oh, what? she didn't say anything about Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Angela, for spending her time with us. And exactly. Whatever that other dude. And some guy. And some guy. <laughs> Why is he still talking? And then our last super chat was from Carol, Aww. and she says, "Thanks for being you." And it was kind of like a, like a dancing emoji kind of guy there. Love it. Oh. <laughs> so thank you to Carol and to Mama. And to Lady yes. for all the donations. You guys are great. Thank you so much. So appreciate it. Mark's getting uh, sandwiches for dinner tonight, so I didn't cook. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll order some pizza instead. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us tonight. This was fun. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you tried it. I don't, really don't think it was that difficult. You saw no. it, how it kind of came together pretty quick. And, um, yeah, so hope you try it. And if you do, you can share it with me on social media. Give this video a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber already, please do subscribe. And ring the bell. Click that little bell icon, and it will send you notifications in your email when we go live. Um, and if you're already a subscriber, you can still go and click on my name or my photo. and Or it's probably just right underneath this video, too. But um, anyhow, click the little bell icon next, under the subscribe, and it will... Um, send you notifications because sometimes YouTube doesn't always suggest uh, if you haven't watched somebody in within the next that week or so then it won't suggest their videos to you anymore and then you kind of drop off the face of the earth so we don't want that to happen to you you if you want to make sure that you get notifications then ringing the bell is the best way of doing it yeah but we try to keep our schedule St stable so that everybody knows right. at the same time. And, you know, this time yeah. of year is difficult because the U.S. just went through the time change. Right. And we know parts of the world have not yet. So, yes. you know, double check your times. Right. Yes, exactly. We're, yeah, we're central daylight time now. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. And uh, we will be here this weekend, right? Mm -hmm. But next weekend we will not. So um, just a minor change in our schedule there that we... Pending, it, pending virus situations. Yeah, that's true. We may not travel at all if there's problems with that. So, All right, guys, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next time. Bye.